On the remote headland in Northumberland stands the remnants of the once grandiose Dunstanborough Castle. The name translates to the fort of the town by the rock. It was built during the 14th century CE on land owned by Thomas II Earl of Lancaster, the wealthiest nobleman in England at the time. He inherited one of the largest and richest aristocratic estates in England upon the death of his father Edmund Crouchback, the then King of England's younger brother. Building began in 1313, when tensions between Thomas and his first cousin, King Edward II of England and Lord of Ireland, became openly hostile and civil war seemed imminent. There exists an account of the first year of construction, which details the scope, including the excavation of a ditch on the castle's western side and the construction of a large gatehouse. No further records on the construction remain, but it appears that building work continued throughout the Great Famine of 1315 to 1317. It is believed that it was either completed or had begun to be operational by March of 1319. In August of that year, Earl Thomas passed through Dunstanborough on his way to the Siege of Berwick. This is thought to be the only time that he ever saw the castle. Civil war eventually broke out in 1321 between the forces of Edward II and the barons led by Thomas. The Earl was defeated at the Battle of Boroughbridge on the 16th of March of 1322, after being intercepted in his retreat to Dunstanborough, where he was captured and taken prisoner. He was not permitted to speak at his tribunal, nor allowed to have anyone else speak on his behalf. He was convicted of treason and sentenced to death. Thomas was executed on the 22nd of March 1322 near Pontefract Castle, and his estates, including Dunstanborough Castle, came into the possession of King Edward II, who garrisoned it with 40 foot soldiers and 40 light armoured cavalry. Thomas's younger brother Henry, who had not taken part in the Baron's Rebellion, petitioned King Edward II to be allowed to inherit the lands and titles that were forfeited upon his brother's execution. Edward accepted the petition, allowing Henry to claim the title of 3rd Earl of Lancaster, where he gained possession of Dunstanborough Castle in 1326. During the second quarter of the 14th century, there were increasing tensions at the border between England and Scotland, after the ascension of David II, King of Scotland, in 1341. The castle served as a refuge for potentially the population of Embleton and other townships during a Scottish raid in the early 1350s. Dunstanborough passed in its possession to John of Gaunt, the fourth son of King Edward III, from marriage to Henry III, Earl of Lancaster's granddaughter. John strengthened the castle against the Scottish after observing the shortcomings of the defences there by converting the great twin-towered gatehouse into a keep, along with other modernisations in the 1380s. Over just three years, he made significant changes to the castle's layout, including a 6.5 metre high, 1.3 metre thick wall, the building of a new towering gateway, six service buildings and a new entrance on the western flank, with barbicians and a drawbridge. In 1399, John of Gaunt's son, Henry IV of England, claimed the throne, and with it, assets including the castle came once again under the control of the crown. Records during Henry VI of England and Lord of Ireland's reign show the various repair works, rebuilding and furnishings occurred during the time as the castle had fallen into disrepair. During the War of the Roses of 1455-1487, to a series of wars fought between the House of Lancaster and the House of York over their claim to the throne, Dunsborough Castle saw besiegement. Sir Ralph Percy, the Joint Constable of Dunstanborough, sympathised with the House of Lancaster and held the castle for Henry VI, and continued to do so even after surrendering to the House of York when the crown was defeated at the Battle of Toton in March of 1461. In 1462, Sir Ralph declared allegiance to the House of Lancaster when King Henry VI's wife, Queen Margaret of Anjou, arrived with her army from France at Bamborough. The Earls of Warwick and Worcester and Sir Ralph Grey as commanders for the now King Edward IV of England of the House of York besieged Dunstanborough, and by Christmas Eve of 1462 the castle surrendered. As part of King Edward IV's attempts at reconciliation, he allowed Sir Ralph Percy to remain in charge of the castle. However, remaining sympathetic to the Lancasters, Percy once again took up arms against the House of York and eventually died at the Battle of Hedgeley Moor in 1464. The Earl of Warwick eventually reoccupied the castle in June of 1464 after a short siege. During this brief period, it is likely that the castle was damaged, 
and other than minor repairs carried out in 1470, no further spending on maintenance or repairs was carried out. By the 1520s, the roof was robbed for lead to be used for the castle at Walk-upon-Tweed, and further materials repurposed to build the Moot Hall in Embleton. Surveys carried out in 1538 and 1543 demonstrated the deterioration. Where the curtain walls were in poor condition, parts of the buildings were missing and only the gatehouse was deemed to be habitable. A widow by the name of Alistair Craster took up residence in the castle as a centre of a farming estate in 1594 presumably living in the gatehouse. In 1603, with the union of the crowns under King James VI of Scotland, who was now also King James I of England and Ireland, Dunsborough was made redundant in national affairs. It was sold into private ownership, where it was turned into farming land. By the 19th and 20th centuries, the ruins had changed hands numerous times, ending in the guardianship of the Office of Works on behalf of the freeholder, the National Trust, in 1929 which continues to this day to manage the nearby stretches of coastline. The region was deemed under threat as a potential landing site for a German invasion during the Second World War. The castle situated in the middle was therefore used as an observation post for a small detachment of the Royal Armoured Corps. Dunsterborough Castle itself is now managed under English heritage and open to the public. Little remains of this once important North England stronghold, however with its rich history and picturesque placement, it's certainly worth visiting.